So, lesson 76 about Mr. Hogan, and it's the 13th part. Um, we spent a lot of time on it, and considering the swing's 1.8 seconds, we can't fit it all into our heads. Um, but it's good background information. And it deals with a lot of the stuff that you come against in the bar room or on the practice ground from your mates. I would say that the setup is a black and white thing, that I can set you up perfectly. There's, there's no debate. There's a black and white mathematical, physical ideal. And I would say the same is true about the backswing. I'd be fairly dogmatic and fairly insistent of the, where the optimum is. But when the downswing happens, it's pure art and choice. I can't be categoric about these things. And it's rather like the chicken and the egg. Which came first? Well, no one knows, but we're damn certain that one causes the other. So there are lots of things in golf like that. They seem to be a variable. And one of the great things that happens in teaching and in Mr. Hogan's book is he's got a red cord from his left wrist down to his hips and he's trying to explain that once he's got the top the first movement is the hips turning to bring the club head through now we've managed to pervert that into some politically correct nonsense called using the ground well that's like saying a boat uses water no it just floats you know we don't use the ground that's not an, an, uh, an, an animated object it's, it's inert it's the way that we function ourselves. We do it on the ground. That's where we're made, not birds. So this idea using the ground, I, I would draw issue with. Okay, so Mr. Hogan is saying that at the top of the backswing, he rotates his hips to clear. Now, let's just have a look at that. Mr. Hogan started off in the early days with a long swing and a strong grip and a flat spin hook left. So if you get to the top and you've got hook spin built into you, clearing the hips is a great neutralizer of hook spin. So it doesn't seem a bad idea. But that's an assumption that you've got Mr. Hogan's hand action. For most of your weekend warriors, you don't get the club to the ball strongly. So if you go back and clear the hip, the ball will just depart stage right and keep going. So you can't be too dogmatic or, cat or, or categorically state about because it's an art. So this is my take on it. If you ask me to pass the coffee, I step across the kitchen and pass you the coffee pot, I wouldn't even think about my hands and my legs in sync. If you said to me, catch that falling vase, I would do so and my leg would move quickly. There's another level for me, and I call it reflex anticipation. If you see a kid spin a pebble, he leads with his hip and his leg. And if you videoed that, you could be forgiven thinking that that was a conscious activity. I don't believe it is. I believe his left leg goes forward, his hip clears, instinctively. So even though golf is a dead ball sport, I believe that when you load the shoulder and drive forward, the hips win the race, the plane shallows, and great things occur. So Mr. Hogan would say that you consciously drive the hips. I understand that. I also believe that if you load the shoulder, load the shoulder fully and go through, if you video that, you would see that my hips and legs start the race. Butch Harmon says, don't coach what nature does for you anyway. And I agree with that. So if your hands are sluggish, your hips and your legs are sluggish. But if you load fully and you drive the ball towards the target, I believe the hips and the legs win the race. But I don't believe that the hip is the thing that ignites the downswing. However, because it's an art, I can't nail all my colors to that mast. If, you, if it works for you, if you can load fully and clear your hips and it produces great results, don't, don't let me stop you. But if you're somebody that finds yourself coming over the top and the ball going right, you might think about your hands rather than your hips.